Hello, my name is Nicholas and welcome to another episode of Programming Concepts. Today we're going to take a look at the map function, which has implementations in most mainstream programming languages. We're going to be doing some hands-on coding. Uh, after looking at the map function on a general level, we'll see a few different ways of using the map function in Java, and we're going to discuss the most common pitfalls. All of the code from the hands-on examples is available on GitHub if you follow the link that I'll provide in the video description below. So let's start with a theoretical problem. We have a list with a bunch of items and we'd like to apply some function to each item on that list. So this, uh, this list could consist of, uh, for example, of numbers and, uh, and the function here, the f of x that we'd like to provide is was one that takes a number and increments it and then returns the result just for, just for uh, the purposes of our example. And the most common and straightforward way of implementing this is in a loop. So in Java, it could look something like this if we pretend that f of x is the incrementing function that we've defined somewhere else. And uh, th this is one of the most fundamental tools in imperative programming, and it does get the job done. And to be clear, this should probably be the preferred approach in 99% of real cases. It's incredibly readable, and anyone with a passing interest in programming can understand and reason about what's going on in this for loop. It's also easy to debug, and assuming you aren't actively mutating the state of everyone and everything from, from inside the loop, uh, it's quite easy to just put breakpoints and, and, and reason about what's going on in this, this very concise for loop here. But it is also sequential, and as our data sets grow larger and larger, and scalability is accounted for in other places, it is possible for these kinds of, uh, of CPU-bound operations to, to actually become a bottleneck. Now let's take a look uh, at, at another approach. Uh, let's quickly talk about the map function on a conceptual level as applicable to most, most programming languages. So the map function takes a function here and a, and a list, and it returns a list. The, this is, this is, we'll call this callback function. So the callback function that we, that we give to map uh, should take one argument of the same type as the items in the list here and should return uh, should, should have a return value also of the same type as the items in this list. So, so this function here is this f of x, and uh, x should be of the same type as the items in the list, and f of x should, return, uh, should, should have a return value of the same type. Our, our map function here is going to, uh, to apply this, this callback function to each item on the list, and then it's going to return a, a new list with, uh, with the, the, the newly computed values of, of all the same items on the, on the list that we gave as a parameter here. And what's great about this is that if we keep our callback function here pure, that is to say we don't mutate any external state and we only calculate a new value based on the values that, that we pass to this f of x, um, we don't have to apply this, this function sequentially to each item on the list one by one. So instead, we can run those computations in parallel and, uh, and can leverage multi-core CPUs properly. The, the operations could even run on, on different machines. But now it's time to move on to some, uh, to some actual hands-on examples in Java. And since, uh, since Java allows mutable state and many of the common data structures are not thread safe, it is important to note that the use of parallel streams in Java does incur a, incur considerable complexity overhead, and, and we should use it only with and after careful consideration. So here we are in the editor. I have uh, this uh, simple class looper here with a main method, um, and it does a bunch of stop le stuff. Let's quickly go through that. So, so uh, we, uh, we declare numbers as a list of integers, and we initialize it to, to have the values 1, 2, and 3. Um, then we're going to, uh, to also have incremented numbers here as a list of integers, and we're just going to initialize that as, as an empty list for now. Uh, then we have a for loop here where we're actually going to do the, the incrementing. So, so this is the for loop that we just went through. We have uh, for each integer x in our original list numbers here, we're going to add the, the, the incremented value here. So we're going to call this method increment. That's going to increment x and, and return it. Uh, it's going to, to apply that to x. And, and then after this for loop is done, uh, we'll have our incremented numbers ready and we'll print it out. So if we quickly run this here, we should have 2, 3, and 4 because these are incremented uh, 
1 becomes 2, 2 becomes 3, and 3 becomes 4. So that's pretty straightforward, and, and that works, but, uh, but as, as we discuss, the thing is, this is sequential. This is sequential, and, uh, and we have to, to do one after the other, uh, even though kind of they're not dependent, dependent on each other. We could just, uh, just do these computations in parallel if we had something a little bit, bit heavier here that we wanted to compute. But so let's keep this for reference and uh, let's uh, let's actually copy this class here. So uh, I'm going to call this one uh, uh, instead of looper. Let's call this uh, mapper or something. It's going to, to use map. So we have a copy here of looper. It's the same for now. Um, so we're actually going to change this a little bit here. Uh, we're not immediately going to make it parallel. We're, we're first going to look at how to how just to use uh, the map function in, in Java in general. So, so what, uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to have the same, uh, same numbers here, uh, same incremented numbers. We're just going to change this implementation part here. So here we're going to say numbers stream, and, uh, and then we're going to say here that uh, we're going to map. And it works so that, uh, so we already have the list. So this, this actual, so um, numbers, is a is a list and list implements collection or extends collection here uh, and collection provides uh, provides this uh, this uh, stream method here so we can call stream let's jump back to the mapper so we can call here in mapper we can call uh, num numbers which is a collection we can call stream on that collection and uh, and then we can call uh, map on the return value of stream and we're going to pass uh, pass map the function that we want to apply to everything on the list. So that's going to be uh, mapper and increment. So we're this is we're passing a function here. We're we're passing this increment function. It's a static function, uh, as you can see. Actually, if if we remove this, this is going to complain. So this has to be a static function. Uh, that's not to say that this, there's still ways of modifying state in Java. So static will not guarantee anything, but but that is a requirement. Um, and uh, and so we're gonna have here mapper mapper uh, increment met, uh, function that we're passing to to map, and then we're gonna call for each and for each uh, each x in 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 the result, we're going to add that to incremented numbers. I'm going to add x here like this. Now, some of you might already know where I'm going with this. This this uh, doesn't work, or I mean, it's going to run, but uh, we have a problem with this. Let's see if we can immediately see what it is. Um, okay, that worked. Let's run it again. Well, actually, yeah. The, the <laughs> let me let me go back. This does actually work because we're not running anything in parallel yet. So so we we are running this sequentially. So so this works for now. Um, and uh, and so this does the same thing, same thing as what we have. So, looper, uh, looper and mapper. Uh, these look a little bit different, but in practice, these do the same thing. Th this is, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is also sequential, but uh, but this is, uh, th th I mean, so this is like a imperative way of doing it, and this is a more declarative way of doing it. But uh, but it's it does the same thing in practice. So f as far as I'm concerned, this is kind of syntactic sugar. Uh, in fact, I I would I would probably lean towards doing this at the moment because this is more e easily understandable to most developers. So if you see a for loop, you can immediately reason about this. This is a little bit newer, so it does take a little bit of time to get used to. And if it just does the same thing in practice, I'm I'm not convinced that uh, that just saying that uh, this is more declarative is is uh, is good enough kind of justification to to uh, go from a for regular for loop to to something like this. Though it does it does kind of drive you towards making these more pure functions, but uh, well. In Java, you still have uh, you still have no guarantees, as is the case for most most mainstream programming languages, uh, as I as I'll say over and over again. So, um, this is our sequential mapper. We're using the map function here. Uh, one thing to note is that the the, the map function we looked at earlier uh, took two parameters. So it took the list and the and then the function. So this one just takes the function because we're 
actually calling map as it's a uh, it's a uh, it's method provided to us here by stream so it's kind of already aware of the list and we don't need to pass that separately uh, but map is implemented a little bit differently in, in different programming languages this is a way to use it in java but uh, but it doesn't work like that for for each language uh, but let's see what what else we can do with this so uh, so let's actually we can close these here for now uh, and then let's make a new copy of uh, let's make a new copy of our mapper and so this is maybe a little bit spoiler spoiler but i'm gonna go say this is a broken parallel mapper because we're gonna make one that doesn't work on purpose just to uh just to illustrate the the kind of risks and pitfalls that that we have with using this in parallel and uh, i'm not gonna go go exhaustively through the list of potential problems you'll encounter but i'll give you a little bit of a taste of of what can happen uh, if you do things in parallel and and don't uh, don't think about it very carefully. So there's two ways of um, of using uh, using parallel streams in Java. They both amount to pretty much the same thing. So one is to instead of calling stream here, we can just say parallel stream. This is one way. And the other way is, uh, is if we go back to our initial situation, we say stream, and then we just say parallel after this. this these both sort of amount to the same thing. Um, and I'm, I'm not actually even sure what the preferred way of using it is, but let's just leave it like this. So we'll have num number stream parallel, and we'll have the same, same stuff as earlier. And let's try and run this now. And uh, this might actually work, but uh, some of the time it doesn't. So uh, here we, we got lucky in a way because it didn't work. So I get to illustrate the problem with this. So we got three, four, and two. So th the expected result was uh, two, three, and four, but we got it in a different order. And the reason for that is that uh, list and array list in Java are not thread safe for one. And, uh, and there's not really any guarantee here that this, for for each is run sequentially, or, or it's not run sequentially, but like it's not um, uh, that that it's that it happens in the correct order. So you're going to get these really strange strange states here, um, and and this the this might work sometimes, like I said, and that's that's maybe the, the the issue with these kinds of bugs is that it's really hard to notice uh, sometimes it's hard to reproduce here i think it will fail most of the time but in some cases it might be that uh, that it works most of the time so they're really tricky to catch they're difficult to reproduce uh, and we do introduce a lot of complexity uh, when when using these kinds of uh, parallel uh, parallel streams um, but uh, let's see what we can do about actually making this uh, this thread safe or, or making it so that uh, we can run this in parallel and get the, the list back in the same order. So uh, let's make a copy again of this. So we're going to copy this and uh, this one <laughs> won't be broken. So I'm going to show you two ways of, of making, uh, making this work. Um, so one thing here is that uh, array list is not thread safe. Uh, so, uh, what we can do is use a wrapper to uh, to make this uh, thread safe. So, what we're going to say here is collections and synchronized list, and we're just going to wrap that like so. So this makes uh, this makes our list all of a sudden thread safe, and we can run this again, and we still don't get it in the right order because this doesn't guarantee. This still doesn't guarantee that it's going to be in the same order, but this will, for one, <laughs> guarantee that it doesn't crash completely. Um, so uh, uh, it, it, this still doesn't guarantee any kind of order. Uh, but uh, what we can do to guarantee order is to change this access here that we have uh, to our list in the first place. So uh, if we make this a little bit bigger we have this for each here where we're adding uh, adding directly uh, the 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 computed value to, to our incremented numbers list and this is the source of our problem 
Well, um, we we have a way of of making this work so that we get it in the same same uh, same order. And what we're going to do is reduce to this collect here, and we're going to give it a collector and say collectors to list, and to list is going to return a collector. So it's going to to return a collector implementation here, uh, which is going to uh, make this stream into a list once again for us. And uh, what we'll also have to do is take this incremented numbers and assign the, the value returned by collect to this incremented numbers. And now if we run this again, one more time, we'll now get the result again in the same order. And running this a few times, uh, you, you'll keep getting it in the same order because this works. And that was a quick look at the idea of the map function and some examples on how to use it in Java with parallel streams. I'm really not urging everyone to go out and use these. A for loop will do fine, fine, just fine most of the time. Uh, in fact, using parallel streams in Java is slower than sequential operations for small data sets uh, as, as it does incur an, an just a, a computational overhead to use them for small data sets. So, so really, th there is a risk here of overusing them. And I hope that if you take one thing away from this short overview, it is to be very careful with parallel computations, especially in a language that allows mutable state. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something and until next time.